Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and we're continuing our study of embedded systems design. In this video, we're going to look at a new serial interface called Inter-Integrated Circuit, or I squared C. And we're, this video is going to give an overview of like, what is this standard? What is this bus? And more importantly, why these pull-up resistors are needed. Okay, so to begin with, uh, I squared C is... Uh, I squared C, I2C, it is a standard serial interface that is implemented with two wires, okay? And when you get into I squared C, what's going to happen is that th this is a, a, step a step function in terms of complexity over uh, SPI and over UART. And there, there's a lot of stuff that goes in here because it's, it becomes more of a protocol and the best way to learn it is to just try to break this down into very small pieces of like, what is this? What is that? Why are these resistors here? And the way that we're going to approach this is I'm going to try to make a bunch of, you know, short videos that just talk about some, some basic concept within I squared C. And then ultimately we'll get to the point where we can actually start writing programs for uh, the MSP430. Okay, so in this video, we're just going to talk about some basic terminology and what these resistors are, because when you do I squared C, one of the most common things you run into is the bus won't work because you forgot resistors and we want to know why they even need to be there. Okay, so let's begin. All right, so I squared C uses two wires to implement the bus. And the reason that I squared C came about was because it, you, they wanted something that was faster than a UART. And the UART is slower because <clears throat> it doesn't provide a clock. And so you can only go so fast when you don't have a synchronous system. And so you see, you know, UARTs, they top out at 115, 200. Okay, that's about as fast as you can go. Uh, and so there's always this need to, to go faster. So I squared C says, look, I'm going to provide the clock. And so it, one of the lines is going to be a clock that allows data to be transmitted synchronously. And that allows a higher data rate than a UART. But another uh, advantage of it was that it's designed so that you only ever use two wires and it can, it can support many, many devices that are hung onto this, including uh, multiple masters, multiple slaves. And so what happens is you can keep adding devices to the bus and you don't increase the number of lines. And if you think about SPY, one of the issues with SPY is that, yeah, you can have a whole bunch of slaves and you can have multiple masters that's supported. But every time you add one of those slaves, you have to add in a either a new select line. So you have to have a new slave transmit enable line. And so the number of lines actually grows as you <clears throat> add to add the number of devices. Even if you daisy chain it, every time that you add a new device, you have to rewire everything. And then the protocol means that you have to shift the data through the big daisy chain. And so they, tr they came up with this I squared C as a way to kind of improve upon the speed of a UART, but reduce, but have something that doesn't add lines as you scale. And so that's what we have here. The reason it's called inner integrated circuit was because it was originally a protocol that they used within like a, a single motherboard or a single printed circuit board. And so it was really a chip to chip style communication. But nowadays you see I squared C used over cables and over wires uh, because, it, because it really is a powerful uh, standard. Okay, <clears throat> let's look at the details. You have a clock and you have a data line. The terminology that you see is SCK for serial clock. <clears throat> Notice that it's not SCLK. SCLK was for SPI, so when you see that, it's, it's going to be the SPI. When you see SCK, that is for I squared C. Same thing with data. SDA is serial data, but it's unique. The SDA three-letter acronym is unique to I squared C, okay? The bus, since it's implemented with two wires, you can see immediately that only one person can be driving at any given time. So you're basically sharing the data uh, line across all the devices. <clears throat> that means the system is by design half a duplex, half duplex. Okay, so you don't have this notion of full duplex whatsoever. There's nothing beyond this. It's always half duplex. Okay, so now to start understanding uh, w the way that it behaves, one of the things you need to do is you start with this concept of an open drain output stage. So this little circuit right here is common to, this is what an I squared C output stage looks like. 
And it's, you look at that and you're like, what happened to the buffer, right? I mean, <laughs> everything in Spy and UART, we just had a triangle and things seemed pretty uh, simple. But it turns out that the way that I squared C was designed, the ability to have many, many devices hanging off of the same data line and clock, they needed a way to come up with what they call bus arbitration, which means how does somebody take over the bus and start driving? And they came up with this notion of the output open drain output stage. And so you're sitting there going, I don't, I've never even seen a transistor before. How, how am I supposed to understand what's going on? <laughs> so let's just look at the basic operation of an NMOS transistor. NMOS stands for negative type material, uh, negative type semiconductor, metal oxide semiconductor. It is a type of transistor that behaves a certain way. We, a transistor is essentially an electronic device that can be uh, operated as a switch. And that's how we're going to look at it. We're going to look at uh, this little symbol. This is the transistor. And we're going to basically think about it as just an, a switch. Okay, So it's either going to be open or closed. What's neat about a transistor is that you have a controlling signal that when you apply a voltage, it will close. And if you apply a different voltage, it will open. So it's basically a uh, voltage control switch. The terms uh, drain, open drain, come from the names of the terminal. So when you look at this, you have three terminals and they have three names. One of them is called the drain, one of them is called source, and one of them is called gate. Gate is the input, and then you can think of the drain and the source as basically the, the contacts for the switch. And then you use the gate to basically either close the switch or open the switch. And that's as far as we need to understand uh, the, the concept of this NMOS thing. Okay, so how do you turn it on? Well, you put... VCC on the gate and the switch will close, okay? And when you do that, current can flow from the drain to the source. <clears throat> you can just think of it as you've closed the, the, the switch and now drain and source are shorted together, okay? So it's now a wire. The gate, the way that it works is it, it's not even, it, there's no current that flows from the gate into the thing. You can kind of see that from the opening, but that's the way that it works. If you apply, you apply a voltage VCC or a logic high, the switch closes, okay? If you apply a ground to the gate, the switch remains open. And so that means if you put a logic uh, zero on the gate, then it's open. So you basically have this, this uh, digital switch. If you put a one on the gate, the switch closes. If you put a zero on the gate, the switch is open. And we can use that to our advantage. So now let's consider this. Open drain means that the drain is what's connected to the line, and we're gonna tie the source terminal to ground. And so now imagine that you have a line where you've got a switch that you can you can basically either leave it open and you're not driving the line, or you can close it and you pull the line to zero. So now think about if we put a high on here. We're gonna put a high on the gate, which is a logic one. That will turn the transistor on, which means it's a switch that closes, and you yank the line to a ground because it's basically you're shorting the line. So we have the ability to drive a zero on the line with this architecture. We just apply a high to the gate. Well, that's pretty cool. All right, well, what else can we do? Well, let's see if we can drive, uh, what happens if we drive the other logical level. If we drive a low to the gate, the transistor's open. And mm, what's that mean? Well, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, if it's open, it's not having any effect on the line. So the line is what we call floating. And so that's not a good thing. A floating line is never good in digital logic because it's kind of just floating all over and it might look like a one sometimes, it might look like a zero sometimes. And so that's no good. So this open drain really only has the ability to drive the line to a zero. And so we say pull it down or pull to a zero. So now to get around this, what they do in I squared C is you must put a pull up resistor on the line. So every line, clock or data, needs a pull up resistor and that now allows you to have, when you drive a low to this, you know that the line will be pulled to a high. So now we finally have a situation where we can drive logic levels to the gate of the transistor, and we see logic levels on the line itself, okay? Now, what's interesting about it was that if you remember, now we have a situation that's kind of weird where I drive a low to the gate, and it drives a high on the line, and the high was provided by the, the pull-up resistor, but you don't really care. It's all basically low here means high here. And then if you drive a high here, it gets you a low there. And it's like, man, wouldn't it be cool if it was like drive a low, get a low, drive a high, get a high? Uh, that would make my life a little bit funner <laughs> or easier to understand. And the makers of the of the MSP430 said, I, I agree. Why don't we put just an inverter here? And that will give us 
basically positive logic, which means now as a programmer, you don't need to worry about all this circuitry. You just need to know if you put a low to this, op this stage, this open drain output stage, the line is going to go to a low. And if you put a high on the output stage or on this uh, open drain output stage, you're going to get a high in the line. So you, you can just use po just regular logic. But here is the key to it all. You, every I squared C bus has to have external pull up resistors. And when I say every, well, everyone we care about, because as an MCU, we're going to look at this for the MSP 430 being either the master or the slave, usually the master, microcontrollers are usually the master. But guess what? You're like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. We have internal pull up resistors. I can do the pull up resistor. I use those all the time when I read from the switches. That's great. You got to remember one thing, those pull up resistors only work when the port is configured as an input, it, they don't work when you have an output. So we are not allowed to use the MSP 430 internal resistors. That means when you build something up with an MSP 430, you got to go make sure that there are pull up resistors out here. So that's, that's like the number one thing I always see when when you first start learning I squared C and you build up a little circuit. And you're like, man, it's just always like stuck at a zero or just kind of floating around. It's like, where's your pull-up resistors? I'm like, oh, pull-up resistors. Why do we need those? And the answer is because I squared C has an open drain output stage. And the reason you need it is so that you can handle bus arbitration. And you'll see that as we look at the protocol in more detail. So that's what I squared C is. And that's why you need the pull-up resistors. As always, support my channel by subscribing and see ya.